We did uh, legs today. Started off with some different stuff, old school stuff you don't see anymore. Did front squats. Uh, started off warming up the nervous system, 135. Actually, it's a Texas bar, so 145 pounds. Then two plates a side, three plates a side. Then went up to 415, wrapped my knees. The reason I like the front squat is to keep the heels elevated with 10 pound plates. Helps work on your balance, your stability. Uh, a lot of Olympic lifters will even hold the weight on the wrists because they have to clean the weight and sink low with it and clean and jerk it over their head. I like to use it as a bodybuilder. I do it a lot like Joe used to do in football. They play college ball, you hold it on your shoulders. The other thing I like to do is the way Arnold and a lot of the bodybuilders did back in the day, Robbie Robinson, uh, I'm trying to think of Charles Glass was another one that mentioned, um, is I put 10 pound plates underneath the heels, get them elevated. It brings out different separation in your quads. Uh, it's always every time I've brought a good package and have probably had the best set of legs I ever had was when I kept those in my routines. So we went up to, I think it was 4.15 today, had a good training partner to wrap my knees. That's always important. You yeah, I, I love that he says moderately heavy at 4.05 on a front squat. Hey, it was 4.15. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> but realistically, guys, not all of you are going to be able to do a front squat with that much weight on there. So, I mean, you know, at, at, at most, you definitely need to be 25 or trying to do your body weight. Um, front squatting, you know, 10, 15 times. Um, that is freaking nature here. That's why he goes up 45 plates, pound plates at a time. Um, but I would definitely recommend, you know, like you're saying, raise your heels a little bit. Um, it activates, you know, a little bit more quad. It, it makes it a little bit more of a full body workout. Um, your shoulders, you know, your delts are all, they're, they're all activated and uh, just an all around lift. Like you're saying that every power lifter, it's a staple. You know what I mean? If you're lifting, you're going to do front squats. Front squat, you know, it's a little bit more emphasis on the quadricep. Back squatting, guys can favor their hamstrings, they can favor their lower back. I think even Johnny Jackson talked about having to do box squats to get his, his squat good again. And then plus, you know, you got power lifters that do it suited, which is totally different. Uh, and then when you got them classic raw, Chase Lone Jones, he's one of the best uh, power lifters in Texas, pound for pound at 242. Him and BJ Whitehead, I think at 275, they could squat. 700, 725, which is world class, even in sleeves without the knee wraps. Some people don't like knee wraps. I like the knee wraps because they keep the knees warm and safe and I even keep the sleeves on throughout the leg workout. Uh, I think I even kept them on during extensions. Normally I'll take them off in between, but it's when we did the pre-exhaust training, which was later in the workout. Um, then after, after we did the front squats, did something a little different. I don't like to get my feet so elevated. I like to do them from a dead stop. And I did stiff-legged deadlifts. I uh, started off 135, 225, 315, no straps, just to work the grip. And then I worked up to five plates a side, so basically 495, 500 pounds, and did some reps with it. I keep the reps a little lower. Um, maybe even in this off season, I might have a goal of 545 for the stiff legs, but remember Bryant was always saying to develop hamstrings, you gotta use more fast twitch muscle fibers instead of slow twitch, lower reps, four to six. I like to keep that from a dead stop and then explode up, just like when you have to deadlift. You see a lot of bodybuilders bounce it. It's great for the ego and the camera, but if you look at Johnny Jackson, he never bounces the weight. He's always resetting every time he pulls. And I do the same thing with a, a stiff leg deadlift. Um, and once again, he definitely warms up. You know, that's one of the biggest things that, that Ed does proper, and he always has, and that's what, kind of why he's freakishly strong. He, he always warms up, um, sometimes does 
uh, a variation of the, the lift itself that he's going to do in order to warm up, you know, the, the, the joint muscle group itself. Um, you know, when, he, when he's talking about muscle speed or the actual contraction speed here, if you look at, you know, um, in the video or whatnot, his weight is pretty much moves the same. Bar speed is pretty much the same throughout all of his lift, regardless of 500 pounds or not. Um, and good power lifters always do that. They're going to keep their bar speed consistent no matter the load. I learned it from Lee Bloody Priest. It's, it's called pre exhaust training. You start with a leg extension, mate, and you do about 15 to 20 reps. Then don't be a fucking wanker because you're only using 315, but you got to do 100 reps in a row. But his whole uh, process behind a lot of reps with less weight for hypertrophy on legs and also getting more definition to pop out was also the reason it's good as to save your joints. He used to always talk about Ronnie Coleman being a freak of nature and it was impressive, but nobody was ever going to touch him. If you want to be able to hang around for a while and compete, stuff like this also helps too, even off season, in season, because you're getting a cardio benefit as well. So 15 leg extensions, then I'm going to move over to that leg press, and even if I have to rest pause, I'm going to try and hit 100 reps in a row. Then we did some another old school uh, pre-exhaust training, leg extensions. Uh, and I had Joe actually push down, I think, on the second set. The negative, yeah. Yeah, give me some more eccentric work. We did on the first set just three plates aside, little trick I learned from Lee Bloody Priest, my old training partner, uh, to protect your tendons and ligaments sometimes to, to push the reps up even higher. You put three plates aside and do 100 reps where you're pumping all that blood into the muscle and doing that after a leg extension is pretty awesome. Out of the way, come on. And then after that, we went. Go, go, go some more detail on that. What does that do for uh, uh, looks? What does that do for endurance? What does that do for everything? Now, when you move the feet around a wide stance and you get more of a sumo base, I don't have the hips to. I've never really pushed that on deadlifting to work sumo because it does kind of turn the deadlift into a rack pull. All the great powerlifters I've talked to, Ed Cohen, they've always talked about how sumo is great. If you can pull more, you have the flexibility, but it, it does put a lot of pressure on your hips. That's why I like using a movement like the leg press. Uh, instead of, you know, like the girls do the adductors where they bring the feet in, you hit those certain muscles. If you do it on a leg press with more moderate weight and sink low like that, you can hit those different end up muscles in your quads. So after the extension, your legs, extensions, you know, quads are already pre-exhausted, but you're hitting those adductor, abductor muscles because you're moving your feet wide, medium, close. Little trick I learned from Josh, Josh Bryant. Yeah, you're definitely doing all of those things to switch it up on the muscle fibers themselves. You're, you're doing a very similar lift. Obviously in the leg press, you're doing a pressing motion. Is that but, a little bit closer? You know, you're, you're doing a pressing motion, but when you change your, you know, the angle of your feet, you're gonna be activating certain, you're putting more emphasis on certain fibers when you're going through the range of motion. And I um, mean, I don't know if it shows in the video, but when, with especially somebody like Ed, who <laughs> has a little bit shorter legs, um, you wanna make sure that you focus on looking at kind of where their butt is touching the pad. The moment your butt and your hips starting to come and do a little hip swoop at the end, um, you kind of want to stop doing the lift at that point. Um, I'm big into full range of motion, um, but when you're doing 100 reps or whatnot, you really just want to stay in that nice, safe range of motion. Um, so when you're switching those reps, you know, and, and those are back to back to back. So the, the muscle fibers themselves are, they're in, they're in a oxygen depleted environment. So the, the fibers are learning how to, you know, adapt to a, uh, you know, anaerobic environment. He's doing a ridiculous amount of reps. So at, at the end of the video, we looked at it, it was two minutes and 38 seconds was, was that one set, you know, the, the cluster set that we did. Um, so that's going to be, uh, attributing a lot of stuff to muscle maturity and you're trying to you know activate more um, hormones on the cellular level um, through this kind of really intense um, one you know all-in-one type of set
As far as, you know, I mean, when you're activating the muscle, uh, you know, your legs are your biggest muscle group, your biggest muscle group. And so your freestanding testosterone is going to be in the muscle, intercellular muscle fibers. So if you're activating those more and you're actually putting uh, what I would call a freakishly ed load on there, like 500 pounds, or, or you're doing an extreme set like this, your muscle fiber can't do anything but call for that hormone if it's there. So uh, it's one of those things is use it or lose it. And if, if it's stored in there and your training isn't this intense, you might not get the call for those, um, not, what's already stored in your body. So you can supplement all you want, but it, once again, if your training's not on par, and that's one thing that I love about Josh Bryant and his, his programming that he does here for Ed, is that there is not a single workout this man has done where he, he's not tired or, or, or can probably almost finish it all in one workout. So I would de definitely say that's a huge attribute to training intensity. And a lot of these guys that are pros out here right now have that intensity. And if you want to match that, you want to be like them, you're, you're going to have to match their intensity. That's a good way to put it. Then we did the seated ham curls. And then Joe had me, he always has to be an influence on me being an athlete. A lot of my training partners, believe it or not, other than Priest, you know, like him, Dwayne Picard was another one that trained with us. Uh, he actually won in classic physique, or top two, excuse me. He got qualified in the Masters and Open, but he was a football player at Blinn Junior College, just like Joe here, but he's big on also flexibility and stretching, which, you know, I need to be better about. I remember even Johnny Jackson saying that at the seminar. That was the main things he wished he would have been better at it in his younger years was staying hydrated, drinking more water, and stretching more, which is the one thing I've been having to definitely pay attention to because injuries suck. If you don't warm up, 